it's almost totally hidden in the trees, but here in rural Pawnee County, south of Pawnee, it is an old steel pony truss bridge over, I think it's Camp Creek. This is the creek that becomes Lone Chimney Lake, and we are downstream of the dam, and there's no fence here between the road and the bridge, and it looks like this is still part of the right-of-way. It looks like the fence is beyond where the roadbed is at, so we'll up here and take a look at this bridge. It's obviously been bypassed for a while now. As you can see, it's a riveted pony truss bridge. And I'll have to look at the 1993 survey to see if I can find this bridge listed. I think I'm on North South uh, 3470 Road. It's a three panel riveted Warren truss bridge. Probably built in the teens or the 20s. See the Illinois Steel Company mark there. There's the hip. There's one of the upper cord connections at the panels. There's the connection at the dead center of the bridge. And then it's a mirror image going the other way. Interesting thing about this bridge is the batten plates between the angles. Here's the main diagonal coming down from the hip, and it has these uh, batten plates made out of a short piece of angle with two rivets. Usually it's a piece of, of plate with two rivets in each member. As you can see this has got the batten plates going down. And there's one of the lower cord connections right here. Better view of the upper cord connection. According to engineering theory, as espoused by books of the period, on an angle like this, you cannot consider both legs of the angle as being an effective part of the member unless they're both connected. So you see this leg of the angle has five rivets going into the plate, and then there is a short piece of angle on the inside, riveting it, connecting it to the plate so that it has a connection to the plate as well. And it's a very neat detail to see on these old bridges. Obviously, these angles aren't quite as heavy and they're not carrying as much load, so there is no connection between this plate and the other leg of the angle. The upper cords and end posts are laced, which means quite simply there's a, a batten plate here, and then there's lacing bars, and then another batten plate at the bottom end. And then each of the Upper cord sections are constructed in much the same way. Two channels, a channel there with a cover plate, stitch riveted. Whenever you have rivets like this, it's called stitch riveting. Of course, the present day alignment of this road is carried on a large metal culvert here. You can see there's quite a bit of water moving there right now. This bridge appears to have its original concrete deck. You can see the curbs there. And there's quite a bit of debris piled up on this deck. Here's a place where the curb is 
been broken away and you can see the outer stringer and you can see a stanchion post for the guardrail where it attaches to the outer stringer and you can see some of the rebar that's part of the deck system. This bridge has got some very nice uh, stone abutments that it stands on. Here's an abutment there with a stone with a uh, poured concrete capping. This is the wing wall of the abutment. You can see some obvious cracking that's going on there between the wing wall and the abutment wall itself. Take a look at the west truss here of the bridge. And there's the continuation of the old alignment of this road and it must go up and curve along and reconnect with the uh, existing alignment of the road after this hill here. Step back here and get a better view of the bridge structure as a whole. Well, true to this channel's name, here is a bridge video. So this has been Oklahoma Bridges and thank you for watching.